All right, so in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use just one light to create that image that you clicked on on the thumbnail. And at the end of the video, you'll also realize that in some of your renders, you could skillfully use just one light to get some very pleasing results. But there are some things that you need to know first, because it can look a little easier than it is. So let me show you. All right, I'm in Blender 4.5 here, and it's a very simple setup I have. So there's just some box props that you find in some studios and some Ray-Ban sunglasses. So let me switch to render view. I'm going to press Z and go to render view. And let's add our lights. And let's press Shift A and add a light, area light. And let's move it up just a bit. All right, let's change this size from, from 1 meter. Let's put it to like 0 0.5, 50 centimeters. So we have like a medium softbox. And let's raise it up just a bit again. To see what is happening here, I'm going to switch the render view on this side. All right, so it's sort of dull. So let's turn the strength up to like 200. All right, so we have a very bright scene here. It looks nice, but we're looking at it to create a, a product image. Maybe if we're in the store and there's a light overhead so that we can see the glasses, well, this is fine. But we're trying to create an image here. So first things first, these boxes here, they have a simple diffuse material. So it's a diffuse material on the boxes, but the glasses, they actually are reflective material. So that is something that we have to note. And the light will interact differently with these two things. Because if I move this, for example, let me switch back to solid view. If I move this up, you will notice that it affects the white boxes because of the inverse square law. Right? So as I move it closer, it gets brighter. But that actually does not happen with the glasses. And to see that clearly, let me turn off the white boxes. And let me zoom into these glasses here. Let me bring the light down all the way down. Let me zoom far in. So we're just seeing the glass. So notice if I move this up away or closer, the brightness does not change on the glass. So that is something that we need to know to understand before lighting. If you want to know much more about this, I talk extensively about this in my training, 3D Product Lighting Mastery. And you get to understand these key pillars of lighting. Let me turn back on the white boxes. So because we understand that, now we know how to approach this. So this is pretty washed out. And there's nothing going on with the body glass and the boxes. To actually get some pleasing results on both the box and on the glasses. In this case, you see, if we move it up, we get to get some, introduce some nice shadows. But then on the glass, we get these harsh edges. All right. So to fix that, we need to change the type of light that we have. We actually want to have a gradient light. I spoke about this in another video. Not all the time we need it, but there are many times where you want to use gradients. And I've actually included a spherical gradient in my ultimate strip box. That is the free version. So I've already appended it. And so instead of using a plane, it does use the area lights. So we, with the area lights selected, we could simply click on use nodes. And we could delete this emission node. And as I said, I've already appended it. So I just have to press shift A and go down to group. And it's the ultimate strip box light. And we're going to use the spherical gradient here. So let's plug this here. Great. Uh, this this already looks really nice, but it's a little dull. So let's turn this to like 650. Or maybe even 700. Alright, great. And let's move it down just a bit. So we get some really nice lighting. And note, note the effect on the, on the glass as well. It's not that harsh or that hard line we saw. It's much more soft. And that's the effect we're looking for. But we could still make this a little more professional. So I'm going to switch to side view. I'm going to press 3 to look at it from the side and let's come out of render view on this view here and let's just move this back just a bit and you see the difference it makes see that and the scene already looks very different we still have our nice highlights on the glasses here and here and here all of them and we also get our shadows but there's a little problem what happens is that this glasses across here is that it's a bit too dark here we can introduce another light, but remember, we're using just one light. So what do we do? We want to put something here, an object here, that could bounce some light back into the scene. So we call it a bounce lighting. So we could press Shift A and add a mesh plane 
rotate it on the X, press R, X, 90. And tap into edit mode and just scale it up a bit. And just move this back, right? Actually forward. And I want to put this a bit close to the to the front here. You notice when I'm in top view, I can't see I can't see the plane. So what I usually do is just give it some modifier, a solidify modifier, add modifier, generate solidify, and press increase the thickness, and I apply that. So now from the top, I can see that object, and I don't want to see it in the camera. So I go to object properties, and this time for that object. I turn off the ray visibility of the camera and just move it in here and immediately notice the difference. So let me turn off the plane. Let me rename it to bounce. So just turn this off. You see that there? If we turn it on, it's as if we introduce another light. We just bounce the light back. But look how here lights up already. Really nice. And to add that effect even further because we want to direct our eyes just to these, the, the sunglasses. We could even increase the shadow here and create more of a gradient. We do see the nice gradation here, but what we could do is with this selected, if we pay attention to this, this gradient here, if we move this across to the side, press GX, move it across to the side, and more than that, press R and rotate it. See that there? We get a real nice gradation. Gradation. It's as if there's, a, there's another light here with a gradient kissing here. However, we get to get some nice reflection. This glasses, this sunglasses here is lit properly and we still get some nice shadows and highlights and all of these here. If we want, we can also feel free to press shift D and add another, another bounce light on this side here if we want, but that's up to taste. And then we could be able to shift it accordingly to how much light we want to fill the scene. We're still keeping some nice shadows. So if we turn off the two bounce lights, you see the difference. And we turn it back on. I, I like just this one alone here. And it creates a really nice image. What I didn't mention though, is that because we want to keep our focus here, we notice that these boxes here are more high key than the floor. And that is because the floor, I turn it to a mid gray. All right. So that it wouldn't take the attention away from the boxes. In real, what we will have to do in real life, we'll have to raise this a bit more and then increase the brightness so that the inverse square law will take effect on the floor. But we are in a 3D software, so I could simply just reduce the color, reduce the white, the brightness. All right. And this is how we are able to recreate this image simply with one light. And that's it. We press F12. And of course, we do some final tweaking in maybe Photoshop or GIMP. We get this pleasing photo that we see here. So that is how to use one light to get professional images. If you'd like to learn more about product lighting in Blender, be sure to check out 3D Product Lighting Mastery. It's a combination of theory together with workshops where you would learn the three key pillars of lighting. You learn during the workshops exactly how and when to use certain lights for certain objects. I'll teach you all you need to learn about product lighting. In addition to that, you will have access to the Studio Lights Premium Edition Known Group. I'll leave some information about that down below in the description if you want to check that out.